I, I, was, I was thinking, you know, talking about a few minutes about complexity and what I, you know, we've been overloaded with complexity, uh, but I think there is a, there is a recipe and there is, you know, there's light in the end of the tunnel, I think. Uh, I, have, I have some ideas and I'd like you to, uh, I'd like to walk you through them. I'm happy to, to you know, get into some discussions in the, in the, in the, in the hallway afterwards. Uh, you know, these things are always best, you know, collectively uh, di discussing and, you know, bantering. But starting with, with what we all want. We all want, you know, faster time to market. You know, that's a given. You know, I mean, business requirements and needs are, are all, all, always pressing. Customers are, <clears throat> are, are becoming extremely picky. You know, we need to get features out quickly. But we, need, we also need, we need to do that with predictability, with repeatability, and with reusability. You know, that's easier said than done, you know, but I think most, most, here, most here are probably de developers or have been developers. And the, so we all, you know, these are things that we really cherish as developers. Some sort of de determinism in how we operate, how we work, and how the systems is running. But we also want cost efficiency. You know, that's where Reactive comes in and all of these things around. Cost, and also energy efficiency. We need, we, of course, we want to be I mean, really good to the planet and, and all, all, of, all, all of those things. And today's infrastructure has gotten us, you know, immensely far. You know, today's cloud infrastructure is, is really, really good. It's, it's mind-blowing good. I mean, it's really, I mean, put yourself back like 10 years and think about how we did things without Kubernetes and Docker and all of these things. It was, it was, it was really, really hard. <clears throat> so that, all, that, all that is great. But, but at the same time, you know, the, the ecosystem and the landscape has been exploded the last years, which is good, but it also makes us completely drown, being drowned in complexity. I mean, I mean, what tools should we use? What, what, uh, I mean, how should we compose them into a, a single cohesive system? This, this image is actually taken from CNCF. I don't mean to, I don't, I don't mean to bash it, but you know, this image reads like a, 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 almost like a joke to me. Um, how can someone make sense of what products to use here? And, and once we decided on the products, I mean, how they should all operate t together. As we, as, as, when we as developers know that things usually fall apart, you know, at the boundaries, where we need to hand off things. And how can we guarantee, you know, uh, that, that, this, that, the, that, that the sort of single system will work cohesively and consistently, and consistent, I mean, even when, when, you know, when load goes up and failure starts, so he's, he's waiting around the corner, etc. It's really, really, really hard. And, and, he said, mo, mo, and, mo, and most that actually did de deploy to the cloud today are, are stuck maintaining all this themselves, many today. I mean, the, the, this means like load balances, ingress router, API gateways, caches, app, app frameworks, libraries, for, for, for building the app, event brokers, databases, usually many of these things to target different type of use cases. All this is very hard. It can be overwhelmingly hard. And, and, and I, was, I was really happy when, when, when serverless came out. You know, serverless, in the, in the, in, you know, as, as, it, as it was presented by Amazon Lambda initially. And it's, it was really, it really pointed the way towards the future, a really bright future, how I think all software should be, should be developed for the cloud. But in a way, it sort of fell short. You know, I mean, many people today still think that function as a service is serverless, and service is equal to function as a service. I think it was the first step on a long journey towards this, you know, greater developer experience for the cloud that, that, that we all want. But, but why stop here, you know? That's something I've been, I've been, I've been sort of thinking a lot about and sort of influencing a lot of the work we've been doing at Lightbin the last, the last, the last years. I don't, think there's, there, I don't think there's no reason. Serverless should be all encompassing, should be everything that we build should be, should be done in, some, in, in, in the serverless developer experience. And you know, it's getting there. Most products, or many, I didn't say most, but many, many, many cloud products today actually provide a, develop, uh, uh, like a, a serverless developer experience. Which is, which, which is great. I mean, there's like serverless databases, serverless caches, I mean, serverless event brokers, etc. But having each of these individually being serverless means that we're still, as developers, left with an integration project, integrating all these serverless APIs into a single cohesive functioning system that we can trust. They're predictable, re reusable, and, and uh, etc.
So, so it's, it's actually, we're not there yet, so to speak. I really think that we can do better. So what lies beyond the current incarnation of serverless? What is really the future of, 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 of cloud when it comes to the developer experience and how we, how we build and operate things in the cloud? Uh, Alfred North Whitehead, you know, famous quote, I'm sure you've seen it before or read it before, is really apt here, in my opinion. He said, the civilization advances by extending the number of important operations that we can perform without thinking about them. This very much applies to us in the software industry, okay? We need to continue to strive higher, to climb the ladder of abstractions. And we, re and we really need to be bold enough to let go of things that we don't necessarily need to need. I mean, we don't need to be able to turn every single knob. As developers, we feel safe, you know, we feel like we, that, we, that we are in control and all that is great. But at, that's, that's at the expense of time to market. And honestly, also in, at the expense of, of building predictable systems that can like, tolerate scale, et, 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 et cetera. Because as the system grows, it becomes more increasingly complex. It just becomes overwhelming to be able to turn all the knobs. In my opinion, we have to let go and, and, and be bold enough to delegate this to others, to platforms, to products, etc. That will free us up to focus on the core value you know, that we want to build for, for our business. What I really think is vertical integration. Stephen O'Grady you know, at Redmond, he, 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 he wrote an article about that some, some time ago that really sort of pulled together a lot of the things that I've been thinking about the last years and, and gave me sort of a name. <clears throat> And he, and he says, there are already too many primitive for, en pr primitives for engineers to deeply understand and manage them all, and more arrive by the day. And even if that was not the case, there's too little upside for, for the overwhelming majority of organizations to select, implement, integrate, operate, and secure every last component or service. Time spent on managing enterprise infrastructure is time not spent building out our own business, you know, building value for our customers, et cetera. You know, the last years, we've sort of been moving from on-premise. You know, 10 years ago, almost everything was on-premise, like 15 years at least. And, 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 we was, and, and, in, and in, that, in this world, we have to do everything ourselves. That's like the red colors here. Everything from, from running the actual hardware throughout the stack, Kubernetes were perhaps not even around like back then, but something similar, but managing the whole stack. And you still have to do that if, if, you're, if you're on, 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 on premise. The promise of the cloud was to take care of a lot of that, half of the stack. I mean, I mean, now, if, if we did deploy now on, on, on all the major cloud providers, in the hardware virtualization operating system, Kubernetes, and actually some, some other service on that, on that level, is all managed for us, which is amazing. But this means that also that all of the rest is on us. And that is increasingly harder and harder, you know, especially as pressure from business comes, come, come, comes, comes pushing down. Okay, so what we really need is full vertical integration. Is that, is that, that's that the platforms is managing everything but the business logic. And Lambda, really, I mean, Faction as a Service, Google, I mean, Google Cloud Functions, Azure Functions, really show the way, but they stopped halfway. They're not for general purpose type of applications. You know, there, there's a whole other talk I've been giving on that, so I, I, I won't get into that. But, but it's really, we need, we need vertical integration for any type of application that we would like to build for any type of use case, more or less. There's always, will always be specialized, you know, for when you, when you need a real-time, true real-time type of systems or whatever. But for the majority of us, this is what we want. We want to just build business value and go home, okay? So how can we do that? Yes, yeah, as Tim, Timothy Keller said that, Freedom is not so much the absence of restrictions as is finding the right ones, the liberating restrictions, okay? So we need to embrace our constraints. We need to, and, but what are those liberating constraints for us as developers, if we take that perspective first, you know? I really think there's three things that we as developers can never ever delegate. 
You know, first is the API. We need to define how we present ourselves to the world, how we communicate with the outside world, how services that we build interact with each other, how they communicate and can solve problems co collectively, microservices to microservices, subsystem to subsystem. Okay? Secondly, we need to define the data model or domain model that represents the, the, the business value you know, of, 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 in terms of data for, for, our, for our use case. You know? How to model that or structure it? It's, it guarantees its constraints, its consistency, guarantees on all of, the, all, all of these things. And finally, the business logic, how you, how you sort of operate on that data. As you get a request through your API, you want to operate and manage your, 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 your data accordingly. I mean, it means like mine intelligence, transform, downsample it, etc. I mean, work, have, making sure that it flows, you know, in the directions it needs through like, workflow and PubSub and all of these things. But apart from these three things, I actually do think the rest can and should be managed by someone else, by a platform, because everything else is just boilerplate. It's just stuff that we need to do in order to be able to build value, meaning these, these three things, okay? Oops. So this is you know, you know, what we've been thinking about and working in life in the, la the, the last three years. So we, we try to embody that in, in, the, in, in, in Calix, in which we have built this fully managed developer API pass that really provides vertical integration as a, as a service. You only have to focus on these three things I told, I told you about. The, re the rest is in us. Throw your app up and, and we run it for you. So it's a super streamlined, guardrailed, very high level developer experience that is, I think, beyond serverless or beyond the current incarnation of serverless because it really brings together everything you need to build real general purpose applications in this new like vision of true serverless developer experience. It's, it's, it's fully polyglot, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, etc. And it's, of course, reactive at its core. Akka is running, you know, is running underneath, doing all the heavy lifting. Alongside Kubernetes, alongside, you know, databases that we all take for granted now in the cloud, etc. But you never need to care or worry about that because that's all on the platform. You know, I, th I, th I think Calix is, is, is actually, it's probably the first in this, but I really think that, you know, this is the way we will build applications in the, in the future. There will be many, many, and there's already, already you know, a lot, of, a lot of discussions in the in industry about that. So in summary, I didn't have much time, but in summary, we all need to build like, f applications faster. We need to build them more predictably, pr repeatable, reusable. And we all need to, you know, being really cost efficient. Both cost, you know, actually in terms of money, but also that tra usually translates to being energy efficient and, 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 cl and climate friendly, et cetera. And, and I really think the cloud development today, as well as edge, you know, there's also something we're thinking a lot about, is too, is too complex. Serverless is extremely promising, but it has fallen short. Let's take that experience and, and provide it, you know, for any type of application. Continue to climb the ladder of abstractions and, and force ourselves to let go of stuff that we don't necessarily need, but it feels good, you know, to turn, uh, knobs to turn, okay? And Calix is here, is, is, is here to help. As I said, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's available, it's fully, it's, it's, it's fully reactive, it provides a really high level to develop, develop experience. So think about these things. If you're interested in Calix, check it out. Go to calix.io. I'd love to hear what your th little thoughts about my vision, about you know, what I think cloud should look like from now and onwards, and uh, what do you think about Calix. So thanks.